Right, so um, welcome to the second of two interactive online sessions that MD UK is holding this afternoon with neuromuscular physiotherapist Marina DeMarco. Um, I'm Rob Burley, MD UK's Director of Campaigns, Care and Support, and it's my pleasure to be chairing both sessions. So we've just had a session on seated exercise, and apologies if you joined us for that first, because the first sort of five, ten minutes of this session will be will be familiar to you, um, but then we'll move into um, that sort of standing up content and again, some, some more Q&A, so do bear with us. Um, online sessions like this are a new venture for MD UK, and we've begun to deliver them um, in part because for now, we're unable to bring our community together through our information days, um, our online, uh, sorry, our national conferences and our muscle groups. So as well as these exercise sessions this afternoon, some of you may have joined us for some of our Muscles Matter online seminar series. We're halfway through that um, series now, and you can watch the six that have already taken place and book um, to join the remaining six through our website. And those remaining sessions are covering limb girdle muscular dystrophy, charcoal marie tooth disease, Becker muscular dystrophy, uh, employment, financial assistance, and neuromuscular services. Um, I'd also just like to take this opportunity to flag that our helpline remains available to anyone affected by muscle or wasting additions. And so do please contact us if you have any questions or are in need of support. We can help you with information and provide either direct support or we can um, signpost you to an organisation that might be able to help you. You can call us on 0800 652 6352 or email info at musculardystrophyuk.org. So in terms of today's session, um, before I introduce and then hand over to Marina, um, a note on how it's going to work. So Marina will start by sharing a few slides um, with us before then going on to demonstrate some exercises. Um, we're recording the session, so if you're joining us with a view to then doing the exercises afterwards with someone else, we'd recommend that you um, encourage them to watch the recording to get with you as well. Um, throughout the session, we've got the chat function um, open and I'll be monitoring that. So do um, type in any questions either through that or through the Q&A and I'll, I'll feed them into to Marina. But also if you um, want to um, speak to Marina directly, um, raise your hand. There's a virtual button where you can raise your hand and um, we'll call on you and my colleague Kat will unmute you um, to ask questions. And we've just had the first session and found that um, just sort of jumping in as, as if you've got any thoughts about the exercise that's being done at that point is it, absolutely fine and, and, and sort of makes makes it easy for really to adapt to the session. So so do do please feel free to to, to, to flag me. Want to come in? Very happy um, for that to happen, and we're keen to make this um, as interactive as possible. Um, so then, without further ado, I'll I'll, I'll introduce to Marina. Um, so Marina, thank you so much for joining us. Um, Marina is the principal neuromuscular physiotherapist based in the Queen Elizabeth University Hospital in Glasgow. She's worked in the field of neuromuscular disorders for over 30 years um, and works with both children and adults with muscle wasting conditions. Marina has a clinical research and teaching remit um, and leads the neuromuscular physiotherapy service in Glasgow and the west of Scotland. And Marina is also the lead clinician for the Scottish Muscle Network um, which, and therefore is supporting research and education throughout Scotland. So, Marina, thank you very much, and I'll hand over to you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Rob, Niru, and Kat, for making all of this possible, because it's really nice to be able to come from my home in, into yours and to talk to you today. Um, so please do make it as interactive as possible, because I want you to get as much as you can um, out of this session. And the more I know about you, um, the, the more I can actually kind of um, just make, make it a little bit more personal to to what your needs are. Okay, so we're going to start off with some slides. Um, so Rob, if you want to um, get our first slide, slide up. Okay, so we're going to talk about activity in, in um, neuromuscular disorders. And I do want to say activity more than exercise or anything else because it's about being active. You know, when we think about exercise, we think about, I don't know about you, but I, I tend to think about doing 10 of this and 20 of that, and really kind of working hard. But activity and movement is something that when you have a muscle disorder and your muscles are getting weaker, um, it becomes, it's, it's a big loss for, for us. And um, it's something that we need to try and hang on to. So looking at how we can continue to have that movement in our lives, perhaps in a slightly different way, is really important. So. The, the next slide, please. 
Okay. So I really, I mean, everybody wants to be more active. I don't know anybody that will say, you know, Marina, I really do not want to be more active. I want to sit more. You know, I really don't know anybody that would would say that. Um, so what is it that stops us from being active? What are our barriers? And this is an important um, consideration for us because when we know what our barriers are, then it helps us think of solutions around those barriers. So I don't know what all of your barriers will be, but I'm going to give you some of the ones that I have come across. The first one is time. Um, people will always say to me, oh, I just don't have time. Um, and interestingly, um, before lockdown, the first lockdown came, I would have been one of those people that would have said, yeah, I don't really have much time. During lockdown, because I was working mainly from home, I had more time on my hands. So, um, and I also wanted to give myself that kind of break from, you know, being at home to go into work, that transitional period where I would be in the car driving to work. So during that time in the morning and in the evening, I went out for a walk around the block. I did a, a 30 minute walk and I started to really look forward to these walks. Um, and since now being back at work, um, I have realized that this is probably a very, very important thing for me to do. Um, it's a very important aspect of my health um, and I know that I want to keep that up and I have kept that practice going. It's required me now to rethink some of the things I do through the day, but I will always ensure that I am getting a walk through the day. So time is, um, is a big barrier for many of us. For some of you guys, um, what I hear is that by the time that you have your shower, by the time you get yourself ready, by the time you get the kids out to school or by the time you go to work and come back, um, you know, it's been a lot of effort because of your muscle weakness and your fatigue is kicking in. So you don't feel, you know, your window of opportunity of when you have that energy is small. So I want you to think about Think about that. And I will talk a little bit more about fatigue management um, in, this, in this side of things because your fatigue management is, is very, very important when it comes to what you do and when you do it. The other one is support. People will tell me that they don't have the support and that might be family or carers. You might live on your own. Um, so getting out somewhere, getting to the pool, getting to the gym is very difficult for you. Um, and unless you have that support, um, it can be very challenging to try and get some more activity into your life. So again, um, think about, is there a friend that you could um, do work with? What about even having the support of using a Zoom call to do some exercise, get some music on? People have been doing it with wine during their lockdown and having a wee chat. What about doing something like that with some music on? where you and your friend can be working together at the same time, because I'll, you'll hear a little bit more about this cooperation and participation um, as, as we talk through this. So looking for support, which might not necessarily be in your home, um, can be challenging for people and that can be a barrier. A lot of people have said to me confidence, people have lost confidence during lockdown. You haven't been out as much. Um, it's been challenging. Many of you have been shielding. Um, so it's been a, a difficult time and confidence has waned, particularly now as um, I know we're about to go back into another lockdown and I think we're going to be seeing this rise and fall of lockdowns and then it loosening a little bit. But during the periods where it's loosening, where we know that it's a little bit safer for us to go out, looking for how you can risk manage getting out of doors, getting out into the fresh air, getting out into that outdoor light is really, really important for us. And that helps with our confidence. And um, one of the issues of um, being indoors all of the time is partly to do with our eyesight. Our eyes get used to the four walls, which are close to us. When you suddenly go out of doors, you can see further away. And that for some people can spark this um, feeling of lack of confidence because they feel as if they're in a very big environment, a big space that they haven't been used to before and they, feel, they may feel fearful about that. So confidence can actually take a dip and um, because you've not been out. Some people aren't very confident about what they feel. They're afraid that they might cause themselves injury or they might fall and have a fracture. So they're afraid about what they can do. And the, the other one is motivation. 
motivation is something where people have said to me before I would go out once or twice a week I would go out for a walk and um, but since lockdown I haven't been able to do that and now I just cannot be bothered I don't even know where to start I don't know how to start um, and this has actually been I would say um, in the last few kind of weeks where we have restarted our home visits and going into people's homes this is the one that they have told me is is the most challenging for them is this loss of motivation so we're just going to explore that a little bit um, more if you want to move on yeah so um the next one is um yeah i said about motivation um it's been very difficult um to, to to try and re kind of start that motivation particularly if you were in a very good habit before of when you met with people when you did it and suddenly that all went and now to try and restart that was still not really possible but there are other things that we can do when we know that activity is very very good for us and we would call improving our um our activity doing more activity just doing more than we did before a health behavior change something that will influence our behavior now there are lots of things as we get older in particular we all think about our health and we want to improve our health but it's not as simple as knowing what's good for you and then doing it part of that has to come from our motivation when we think about motivation we think about internal motivation and external motivation health behavior change requires really good internal motivation what do i mean by that well external motivation is easy external motivation is the is the impetus that makes us take on more responsibility at work it makes us work longer hours why because we might be getting paid more so that's a very big external motivator money um, your piece up at the end of the month showing you that you've got this increase in salary big motivator another big motivator is um, you might have a new title you might have got more responsibility you may have more kudos in your job again people will take on extra responsibility to move up that career ladder so there's lots of things that we can do external motivation it might be something that we do with our children you tidy your room i will take you to the park okay so we're giving them this external motivation internal motivation is a little bit different it's the kind of motivation that keeps us doing hobbies we're not getting paid to do a hobby we're not getting paid to um uh, to, to, to do photography or or do whatever we want to do we do it because we enjoy it and our hobbies can be anything from you know watching um it might be that you absolutely love your tv so you're getting your work done so that you can have that hour to sit down and watch the next episode of whatever it is that you're watching on netflix and um, it might be because you really enjoy that and it's a time that gives you great pleasure really understanding where your pleasure comes from is is a very important part of our internal motivation um something that gives you joy something that makes you feel good now you're thinking to yourself how can I exercise or activity do that well for those of you who have been exercising already for a long time you know that if you don't do it you don't feel good you know that it might be hard for you to to do it that day but when you don't do it you don't have such a good day you don't feel as stretched you don't feel as confident you don't feel as good about yourself um, so that's one factor of of activity that helps us and um, the other thing is is the knowledge of what activity does for us now in the past 10 years or so the research into what happens in our bodies it's not that we maybe be be able to move a little further or gain a little bit more muscle it's what happens in our bodies when we start to become more activate when we uh, more more active when we activate our muscles lots of things we know that um one of the big things and one of the big drivers just now is that um activating your muscle will improve your immune system I mean, that's amazing you can actually not just by what you're eating but you can actually improve your immune system by moving more how does that happen when we move we used to think our muscles just were there to hold up our body and give us strength but we now know our muscles are almost like an organ our organs kind of secrete things into our bloodstream and into our systems muscles do that too 
and they secrete these little proteins, these little um, uh, uh, hormonal kind of um, uh, proteins called myokines. And myokines um, are, depending on what kind of activity you do, these clusters of myokines, different myokines are released at different times. So these myokines actually help improve our immune system. So simply by moving, we can improve our immune systems. And when I first heard that, I was completely blown away by it because I knew that we can reduce our risk of diabetes and we can reverse diabetes simply by increasing our activity. I knew that we can lower our blood pressure, that we can um, uh, become more active, have more energy. I knew that we can reduce, re reduce our risk of certain types of cancers just by becoming more active. But what I didn't know was that we can actually improve our immune systems, our immune response. Who does not want to do that at this time? You know, uh, it's, to me, it's, it, it's a no-brainer. It's something that we, can, we, we should be trying to do that when we can. So that is a, um, knowing also that you are giving yourself that time that you are looking after yourself. When I started, as I say, in lockdown, going out for that little walk every day, suddenly it made me think, gosh, this is my time. This is for me. I'm doing this. I'm, I'm actually doing this for me. Um, I really enjoyed it. And, and it started to make me feel like I was spoiling myself a little bit. Um, and I thought, this is a really nice thing to do. And that is why now I, I have kept that going. I really enjoy it. So look for the joy, look for the joy in the activity that you are choosing to do. Activity makes us happy. You just need to look out the window and see children outside playing, they're laughing and joking, they're running about in the street, they're playing games with one another. When we were young, you couldn't wait to get outside to, to play um, and play is activity. Anything that involves any kind of movement is, is a form of activity. And activity, again, these myokines also release um, hormones that have a direct effect on our brain, which increases the happiness in our, in our heads and in our brains. So again, these myokines are amazing little um, proteins. They're just fabulous. Um, and they do so much that we didn't even know anything about. You know, it's, it's only, as I say, in the last 10 years. We were made to move. Everything that we do requires movement. Look at me talking to you today. My mouth is moving all the time. Movement. Communication requires movement. Even if, if, if for people who, you, who use sign language, movement. Communication, everything involves movement. Breathing involves movement. That big breath in. And back out. Our chests are rising and falling. The very thing that keeps us alive, that air going into our lungs, is, is movement. So we were made to move and giving our body back that movement. You know, in, in, in years um, gone by, everything we did involved movement. And it's only nowadays that we tend to do more um, of our jobs, more of our daily practice is sitting still. You know, the invention of um, computers has been a, a great thing, a great benefit. We can now do so much. But it's also given us that um, uh, kind of, you like, it's, it's almost like, yeah, it's okay to sit still because you're working, you're in front of your computer, you're doing your day's work. But that wasn't what day's work was about many years ago. So we've changed, but we need to start thinking about how we can get um, movement into, into our lives. Again, if you think back, all of celebrations involve movement. If you think about children's party, we have party games. If you think about going to a night out, it might involve dancing, whether you're in a wheelchair, whether you're um, um, able to, to walk around or whatever, we're dancing, we're moving. Everything that we do involves movement. The way that we celebrate over time involves movement. The other thing that celebration involves is music and music and movement go together. As soon as you put on the radio, I mean, I know that um, certainly when I am doing my housework, I have music blaring um, and that gives me that motivation. It actually lifts my energy levels and gets me through my housework because I'm usually cleaning the windows and singing along to something. As soon as you hear that beat, you automatically want to move to it. Our bodies and music were made made to go. They're a match made in heaven. They were meant to go together. Music and movement are, are um, a very good pairing. And if you are doing any exercise by yourself in the house, I would invite you 
to put on your favourite music to do that too. We also know that places like gyms are, um, you know, you'll hear that boom, 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 boom if you're going on to, to one of a treadmill and they try to play music at, now I think it might be around about 140 beats a minute because that's a very good running pace. If you could go on to your Spotify, you can download um, like running music, walking music, um, music that is actually has those beats per minute to give you that um, a, a, a kind of motivation and that that elevation of your energy levels. So today what I want to ask you to do is to start thinking about doing more than you did before, looking for that joy in your movement and just being able to do a little bit more. If you did more than you did yesterday, you know, fantastic. I, I am absolutely delighted for you and you should celebrate that. I think what I see a lot of people doing is trying to do too much and they sicken themselves to think, no, I can't do it, just, just far too much. And in the earlier session, we even concentrated on things like our breathing practices and how to activate muscles. And I will show you a little bit about that um, at the start of this. I know that we're going to do more of the work today in standing. I also want to show you a little bit about muscle activation and what that means going from the transition of sitting exercise to standing exercise. So give yourself praise for your achievements. If you did more today than you did yesterday, you're, you're, you've done really well. That's, that's a great achievement and your body will thank you for it. Can we have the next slide? Okay, so it's about small steps. And I know that you probably hear this over and over again, and we can't help, help ourselves. Sometimes when we make that commitment to start to exercise or do something, we do get carried away with ourselves. But I want to say to you, hold back hold back, do not overcommit yourself, do not do too much. And I'm going to tell you about that in relation to fatigue management. So how do we start thinking about increasing movement? Well, I don't know who, who you all are today. Um, you may not feel you've got very much movement. Um, and before it may be people that were power chair, in the last session, we maybe had people who, had, who were power chair and dependent or ventilated. Um, but it might be that you still use a wheelchair for long distances or you have balance issues outside so you might want to use a wheelchair um, you might be able to get around indoors but you would require a stick out of doors um, and again walking out of doors is something that is very good for us because it challenges our balance and it might be that you would only do a very small walk and even thinking about if you're thinking about a walk if you're lucky enough to have a garden or a garden path it may well be that you would start maybe going up and down the garden paths once or twice and that would be enough i want to kind of bring in um here when we're talking about increasing our, our movement we think about this in three ways we think about exercise or activity in terms of um Frequency, and by frequency, I mean how often you are exercising or how often you are being active. So that's frequency. Duration is how long each of these periods of duration are, how long these periods of activity are. And the third one is intensity, how hard you are working. What I always ask people to start with is frequency. If you are new to exercise, start thinking about doing it every other day, doing a little amount up and down your garden path every other day, frequency, okay? Then you might want to do it every day. Then you might want to do it morning and evening, morning and afternoon, do it twice a day. So think about how frequent you are doing it. Think about what you're doing at the moment and how you can increase that frequency. When you're doing it regularly and you are exercising at a, a, a fairly you know, frequent level, then I would start thinking about duration. So maybe rather than doing it um, you know, four or five times, small periods, two or three minutes, four or five times a day, let's start thinking about making those periods of exercise a little bit longer. So start to think about maybe doing them for five minutes, six minutes, maybe twice a day, or five or six minutes one day back to two or three minutes the next day, up to five or six minutes the day after, okay? Your fatigue levels will come in here and I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about that in a minute. So frequency, duration, 
and last is intensity. And to be honest with you, people with a muscle condition, um, I would say that that's the last thing I am thinking about. But it might be that if you're exercising every other day, then you do think about your intensity levels. And to do that, we would add things like weights or bands or resistance, something that makes you work a little bit harder. Okay, so think about what you're doing and how you can increase that. Okay, so I've said to you as well, I'm going to talk a little bit about fatigue. I'm aware that I'm, I'm, I've got quite a lot to say, but it's just, it, you know, I'm thinking about how we, how we move forward. With fatigue, fatigue is different on different days. You're going to have good days and bad days. If you are having a good day, you can do more. If you're having a bad day, you can do less or sometimes nothing. Sometimes on a bad day, it's enough for you to get up and get showered and that will take up all your energy. So on a bad day, you don't think about doing anything, you rest and you need to have that permission to rest. It's not that you're being lazy. We, we coin that phrase therapeutic rest because during those rest phases, your body is actually working very hard. Fatigue is a whole other talk, okay? It's, um, I, I have an hour's presentation on fatigue and how to manage fatigue and, I, and we don't have time for that here. But what I want you to know is when you're doing exercise, you won't have this trajectory where you're improving, improving, improving day on day. You're going to be up and down like that because every day is different and you have to tune into your body. Think about how your body feels that day and then you will exercise or do activity accordingly. I also want you to think about the fact that I do not want you to exercise or do activity until you feel you can't do any more. If you do that, you're going to push your body into fatigue and fatigue takes longer to recover. You might end up having two or three days where you can't do anything because your body's in that recovery phase. So for you, it's really important that you think about your fatigue levels in relation to this. If you go onto the Scottish Muscle Network website, there are leaflets, and I do have a leaflet on managing your fatigue, um, and that might be something that you can download um, you know, at the start of thinking about how you become more active, because that's probably one of the biggest barriers that will put you off if you start and then you become really tired and you can't do anything for three days. You can't even see people or go to work or do anything because you're so tired. So I want you to think about managing your fatigue. Okay. Um, is that the last slide? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And, and Marina, we've actually had a hand up during the presentation. Perfect. Uh, so um, Sharon Matthews, can I, can I come to you? My colleague Kat will unmute you. Hi, Sharon. Hi. How can uh, I help you? Oh, I hadn't, I, well, I didn't have a question. Oh, sorry, I don't know if something came up. Oh, okay. I wanted to maybe some people maybe just want to make a comment or something, but that's fine. That's okay. <laughs> oh no, 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 no. This is the first time I've joined, so it's just oh, quite well, interesting welcome, to kind of hear all the bits. And <laughs> I'm um, I'm kind of well, I'm not officially diagnosed, but I'm definitely sort of new to it um, and have seen quite progressive weakness um, just over well, probably since the start of the year. And um, so for me, it's just kind of understanding what. Um, what I should and shouldn't be doing almost because obviously okay. my muscles are you know not as good anymore and I have seen some wastage in my legs and okay. but I've always been a very active person and obviously still want to keep what you muscles are working active, as good as possible Absolutely. but at the same time don't want to kind of do any damage, damage. or overwork the muscles that are still working because I'm obviously so much more reliant on those now than Absolutely. you know I was before maybe like my thigh muscles for example because I've lost quite a lot of muscle strength in my core and my glutes and things so yeah it's just the reason okay. I've kind of joined is just to get that understanding a bit more and just knowing okay. what is the right thing to do or not <laughs> okay no that's fine that's absolutely fine um, it might be good for you as well to download that leaflet on fatigue management because that will help you yeah. understand your energy levels a bit better um, and to know when the best time to exercise is. If you try to do activity when you're fatigued, you are more likely to have a fall or to injure yourself because yeah. um, in or you need to have, have your muscles engaged in order to do any kind of form of activity. So if you're very tired and you're... And, the fatigue that you experience in muscle conditions is very different to somebody coming in and saying, oh, I'm tired today because I didn't get enough sleep. It's totally different. Yes. It's related to your muscle and the ability of your muscle to recover. So don't, um, so, so do download that leaflet and, um, and get, and, and, 
you know, increase your kind of understanding about it, that, that I think would be really helpful for you. Okay, that sounds great. Thank you. Okay. Okay. All right. So what I'm going to do is I want to start off with talking a little bit about how we engage our muscles. And I'm going to start by doing this in sitting. So um, if any of you are sitting today, or well, you, hopefully you're all sitting actually, I want you to do this with me. So I'm just going to move over onto the bed and just, um, just talk a little bit about this. I'm moving over here. Okay, so, oh, and you can't see me. <laughs> I had to do this, you'll get used to me doing this because I have to keep jumping up and down because um, obviously uh, I'm just trying to, <laughs> so the camera can see me. Okay. So when you're sitting, um, now this bed is exactly right for me because my knees are at 90 degrees. If the bed was too high or the chair was too high, I would be up here. And as soon as you start to kind of raise your hips, you tilt your pelvis forward. For many muscle conditions, um, our core is a bit weaker. So we want to try and make sure that we're fully supported. So in order to, to do that, any exercise that you do in sitting, I want to make sure that your feet are flat on the floor or if you're in a wheelchair for part of the day, that your feet are on the foot plates. You might have armrests on your chair, just pop your hands onto the armrests, or they might, you can pop them on your lap if you don't. Okay, so the first thing, we talked a little bit about breathing, and when we're doing any stretching, when people come to see me at clinic and they haven't done any exercise for a while, the first thing I always start them off with is stretching. We think of um, trying to keep the muscle tone and we think about um, using weights or bands or resistance, but stretching is also um, important when it comes to um, improving our muscle strength because stretching, when, if you think about when we're, you know, bending your elbow, you're shortening, your biceps is getting bigger and because the muscles are contracting, they're bunching up, but when you stretch out, it looks like it's getting smaller because it's elongating. So even that ability to elongate your muscles is very important for them because it strengthens the muscle, the muscle fibers themselves because they have to be strong in order to stretch. So don't think, so people who do yoga, who do Pilates um, are all fantastic because it's slow moves. And I know for many of you, it might be difficult to get into those positions, but there are lots of things that you can do in yoga and Pilates that you can actually do in sitting as well that will help with your, that will help with your strengthening. And as soon as you come up into the standing, um, which I'll do in a minute, but I, I, I kind of want to just basically talk through what, I'm talk, what I mean by activating our muscles. So um, even those who don't have much movement or if you're having a bad day, even just by sitting and pushing your shoulders down, pushing your elbows down into the, the armrests, pushing your hands down into your lap, as soon as you start pushing down, I want you to start now thinking about elongating and sitting up as tall as you can. You will feel your arms are actually working quite hard because you're pushing down through your hands. You have started to um, initiate the muscles in your core. Think about sitting up nice and tall, big space between your shoulders and your ear. And in this space, take in a breath cycle. So a big breath in and a breath out and one more a breath in and a breath out and relax okay can i just ask i, I don't need you all to put your hands up at all but even just a couple of you um did you feel your arms working your core working and did you feel the way that your ribs expanded and moved in and out. Did you feel the upper half of your body working? What are people saying, Rob? <laughs> yeah, we've had one, a couple of hands up, say, which I, I take as agreement for, with that. So yeah, I certainly felt that too. Oh, right. lots of that now. Yeah. Lots of, yeah, that's, that's good. Okay. The next thing I want you to do is to push your feet in down through the floor. Push them down, push them down, push them down. And as you're pushing them down, you will start to feel your hips lifting a little bit. Keep that pressure on your feet, on all four corners of your feet. Keep the pressure going through your feet. Take a breath cycle in. And breathe out. Breath cycle in. The biggest breath you've done all day. The longest breath out you've done all day. And relax. 
Do you feel that you have activated the muscles in your legs? I hope I'm hearing yes. That breath cycle in, when you start to do that long breath out, you're activating your stomach as well because in order to breathe out, we have to contract all the muscles around our core and push that air out. Simply by doing that, you have already activated your muscles. We've already done quite a lot. And there is lots of things that can be done in sitting. So if you're having a day where you're very tired, just think about sitting. Think about um, if your balance is poor, do not struggle in standing, okay? You might think that, yeah, but I, I need to do everything in standing because I want to keep standing. No, take away the stress, take away the fear, take away the risk of doing something in standing that might cause you to overbalance and come back down into, into sitting. There are lots of things that we can do in sitting. You know, we can do our marching, we can, you know, arms up, you can do lots as you're marching. You can be doing lots of work taking your arms out to the side at the same time as a leg, sort of thing that you would do in standing, you can do in sitting, okay? There's absolutely lots of work that you can do, that you can bring it down on the days where you do not have um, that ability, that, that same strength or that same energy, or you feel that your balance is not as good. The other thing that I would do, I would also say to you, is to look on the Scottish Muscle Network website, because there I have um, put a, um, three videos on in stretches, stretches in standing, stretches in sitting and stretches in lying because I don't have time to go through everything today but if you can look at the Scottish Muscle Network website smn.scot.nhs.uk, go into the physiotherapy level you will see videos on stretching that you can do in each of these um, um, uh, kind of um, postures. What I would also say to you is um, if something is hard you know, adapt it for yourself. Start to think, you know, if you can't take your hand all the way out, do it with a bent arm, okay? You do what you can do, but do not push yourself into things that will cause you to um, be overbalanced or to overstretch. You do everything within your level because what you will be doing will be more than you've done before, okay? And it's something that I say all the time, so long as you're doing more than you did before. Okay, so... What kind of things um, do we do in, in standing? Um, well, walking is, is probably one of the, the biggest um, a, a, a kind of um, exercises that is very, very good. Walking um, is underestimated, but as we walk, every time we take a step forward, we move in three planes. We move forward or backwards. We move side to side because every time we take a step forward, we have to release the weight on one leg. So we're working that other leg. So we're taking the step forward, we're moving forward. We're moving side to side by every time we release the, the weight, but we're also moving up and down and our pelvis moves into this kind of rotation. So as we're walking, you're gonna to start to move right hand, left leg, left hand, right leg. So you're getting that, we're gonna sit back down. You're getting that rotation in at your trunk, okay? So every time you walk, you're rotating your trunk. Walking is probably one of um, my favorite exercises because that up and down and rotation that you get at the trunk is very, very good for your back. Now, many people with muscle disorders will stand with a very lordotic stance, a very extended back, and back pain is something that you feel. And in order to, um, to walk, you might feel that you go into that hyperextended position. So walking is only something that you can do for short periods. And I absolutely would say to you, do not overdo it. Do not overwalk. Look for places where you can sit down, where you can have that rest period. Because as soon as you sit down, give yourself that stretch, that kind of allowing your shoulders to come forward and bend forward. If you can really bend forward into that position, do it. Because you really need to stretch out your back. If you're the sort of person that um, in order to have that stability around your pelvis, you have to go into this hyper lordotic position where you're really, really kind of pushed back like that. Then you need to do the opposite movement to that in order to relieve any kind of pain. Movement um, will, will help pain. So walking for me is one of the, the, um, the best things to do. Now, it might be that you're walking with a walking frame or a relator. Um, or something along those lines. And that is a great thing because you're taking out your top half, you're 
leaning down through. Some of you who maybe have upper um, arm weakness, you might be using a, a bigger frame that you can actually put your arms on and that's, that's great too. Um, but for those of you who do not require a walking aid, I want you to think about the way that you do your walking. And I want you to think about this rotation, okay? This rotation where we walk with right hand, left leg, where we're rotating in our trunk. Rotation is one of the first movements that we lose in muscle conditions. And that rotation is um, one of the biggest areas that can send our balance off. So if balance is an issue with you, I want you to start thinking about rotation, okay? Not, it doesn't necessarily, so rotation and crossing the midline. So things like opposite hand, opposite knee, okay? Really turning round then so that you can actually get your hand right over to the other side and you're really um, making sure that you're getting that rotation in. If your balance is, is not good enough to do it in standing, we're coming back down into sitting and we're going to rotate in sitting opposite hand to opposite leg and it might be then you will take your hand right down to the outside of your ankle okay you really want to get that rotation in at the spine if you can if you can improve your rotation then we we can look at how we improve our balance one of the things that i have here and um, that's quite good for doing things like this is using these kind of bands and um, it's like spaghetti junction here <laughs> um, all of these bands represent a different strength. I think yellow is the easiest, red, then green, then blue. And you get handles with them. You can buy these off of Amazon. You can buy them anywhere. Um, and they're not that expensive. And you can buy really good ones or you can buy, um, you know, the kind of cheaper ones. And these are fine. But, it, but um, if you are able to add in a little bit of resistance, I would say to you um, to do that when you're so stretching round and back stretching so you're holding one side of your band you can do it with resistance band round and back okay you're really working on this core because rotation is one of the first things that we lose and that's something that I want you to think about whenever you're doing any exercise if you're the sort of person that can get to the gym um, and you are able to get up onto the elliptical walk walkers if that's something that you can do right hand left leg Okay, but these are great. Anything that works opposite sides of the body is going to really challenge. And it is also very good for our um, brain pathways because again, um, when you're not challenging yourself and you're not moving across your midline, um, it's something that um, tends to um, affect us um, when it comes to balance. So walking and um, swimming, um, the, any of these kind of um, kind of exercises are really good now. I, I'm not sure how I can actually make can help you see me. And, and Marina, in the um, in the chat function, someone's mentioned they use a, a, a roller tour. Um, what or um, a relator? Relator. That's thank you very yep. much. Yeah. What? Could you maybe just explain what what that is and kind of how that works for people. So the relator is just a walking aid with wheels on it. And it means that you're walking so that you're able to still walk, but you have that support. And some relators, you can actually lean your forearms through as well. So we've got little handles here, but you whole forearm. So people who maybe don't have the strength in their hands would use something like that. And is there an um, ideal height for the handles? Someone was asking as well. Is there kind of a, is there a sort of standard where your so the height should be level with your hips or something, or is it depend on the individual? So the height, what we would look for is you would want your elbow to be bent around about 15 or 20 degrees. Okay, you don't want it too high. Now in some areas, um, depending on your muscle strength and the, if you're using kind of slightly different muscles, um, sometimes I do have it higher. And certainly if you've got issues with your shoulders, I would have uh, a gutter frame, a gutter on it so that I'm actually, so it would, be, it would be up here. But generally speaking for most people, you want your elbows to be bent about 15 or 20 degrees when they're on the relator and that just gives you that purchase to be able to move it forward. If it's too high, you know, then if it's, you know, your shoulders tend to rise up and it's going to cause you other problems. You want to be able to have your shoulders down and your, your hands about here. Thank you. Okay. So when, we, when we're talking about walking, one of the things um, that I really like is there are videos on YouTube and different things that you can have a look at. I mean, try things yourself. You don't need to go, um, I'm not recommending anything specifically, but there's so many out there. And one of the things that we, we can do is actually walking on the spot. And um, to walk a mile is 20 minutes. 
and walking on the spot is actually very good. And what you'll find is some of these videos will get you walking forward, back, just a step forward and a step back. And it's literally, you just need such a small square. So if you can't get outside during COVID, then think about walking on the spot, okay? Um, I'm going to come back to resistance. Um, so I said earlier, when we talked about um, activating our muscles, um, one of the things, we don't actually need to use resistance. If you are taking your hands out like that, I would want you to think about tightening up your stomach. Just do this from the side. So trying, if you can, to tuck your hips under, okay, as best you can. Um, and activating your stomach muscles. As soon as you activate your stomach muscles, you're doing anything feet hip width apart. You can be doing lots of these movements and standing, okay? So you're really, you're still working your legs here. You're working your core, but these are very good movements that you can do. Um, before I go on to, to weights, then actually holding, and, um, you don't actually have to have a weight. If you actually pretend that you're pulling your arms across, pulling your arms across, pulling your arms across and out, pushing them up, pushing them up, pushing them up. If you pretend you're holding a weight, you are activating more muscle fibers. You get better muscle fiber recruitment. You will get that when you're using a weight but if you can think about the muscle groups that you are working, you will activate more of that muscle and you will have a better um, muscle contraction. And Marina, we've had a really good question about whether yep. these exercises, um, in terms of the exercises you've done so far, do they kind of reduce the balance issues people might experience or are they more about helping manage balance? And I, I really they will want... help manage balance. Um, there's... Um, there's a, a group of exercises called the Super Six, which I will just maybe quickly show you. Um, so depending on your muscle condition, if you have lost muscle, it is very difficult to regain that muscle. What you can do is you can make your muscles more efficient. We tend to use much less of our muscles than we have available to us. Once we start doing, doing any activity, in the first six weeks of any activity program, what you are doing is your muscles are recruiting more muscle fibers. They're using more of the muscle that you have available to you. People will tell you, oh, I've been at the gym a couple of weeks now. I'm feeling so much better. I'm feeling so much stronger. That's been too soon to grow more muscle fibers. You haven't grown anymore. What you have done is you have made the pathways more efficient. So you've made the, trans the, trans the nerve transmission down to the muscle faster. You, it's more efficient. You have made the way that the muscles contract and relax more efficient. You have recruited more of those muscle fibers. So everything is starting to work better. Your circulation, everything is working better. So what we would aim to do by um, doing activity is to keep those muscles engaged, to make everything work better, to make your turnover of muscle more efficient um, because our muscles are constantly dying off and regenerating they will regenerate better if you are more active. So we really want to make sure that you are using what you have available to you and that you are the best version that you can be, okay? Some of the muscle conditions, it will be possible to um, improve your muscle strength. But for many of them, it's really not. And we want to make sure that you are using what's available to, to you, as I, as I said. Um, so yeah, so it's about looking at um, what we have available to us and I completely lost my train of thought um so I was going to talk about um the weights and things like that yeah okay so um so so um yeah and so back to the challenge so back to the balance that's what we're talking about um, so when we are thinking about our balance if you can make those rotation muscles more available, you can improve your balance. You also, um, when you stop having that rotation, the pathways in your brain become sluggish. And we have to think of these cross lateral pathways in the right side of your brain, the left side of your brain doing the opposite, looking after the opposite side. These pathways in our brain are very important and we actually build, rebuild those pathways um, when we start to use opposite hand to opposite leg and cross midline. So looking at that, the motor connections are really important as well. And maybe 
because we're trying to balance, I will show you. So the super six exercises are, and I know that I'll just start, that now. I know that some of you can um, maybe do, do all of this, but holding on to a table or holding on to something, you would think about going up on your toes or as high up on your toes as you can. That would be the first one. Just going up onto your toes, holding on to something if you need to, um, or if you can only do a little bit and you're just even moving the weight forward onto your toes, you're changing your weight transference and weight back onto your heels. If you can lift your heels up, that's very good. So that's the first two. Toes, or even just moving your weight forward onto your toes so that you feel the weight there is the first one. Second one is back onto your heels or lifting your heels. The next one is standing on one leg. So again, holding on to something and just standing on one leg. Wow. Or if, and then you can progress that by not holding on to anything. The next one is called the single leg stance. So it's putting one foot in front of the other. Okay. And that's something that could be actually very challenging. You can see how hard my legs are working just now. And I'm um, just, just by putting one foot in front of the other and changing my um, kind of base. So that would be another one. Um, the next one would be... Um, just bending your knees, bending your knees and straightening up. Just knee bends, little squats. If you can, further down you can go, the better. So these are um, uh, uh, exercises specifically looking at balance and it may well be that um, if you actually Google the super six balance exercises, you will see that they will come up. And these have been researched and developed for um, the aging population because the aging population, the first thing you lose is rotation as we get older. It's, um, if you think about um, the way that a baby learns to walk, they learn to walk by cruising around the furniture. So they're learning to do these side steps first. The last thing they learn is actually taking the steps forward. It's the last thing that we learn and the first thing that we lose is rotation. So thinking about, so looking at those super six um, are, are actually very good exercises to help you. I'm aware that the time is running away for this session. I know we've got one. We've got one question in at the moment, yeah. which is linked to that, which is around any tips for exercises. I think to help move from a sitting position to a standing position. So, are any of those super sixes sort of helpful with with that in particular? Yeah. So that one. So even so, moving from the sitting position into the standing position, making sure that your your feet are flat on the floor, come to the edge of the chair, and just start off by pushing down, pushing down by activating because we really want to really activate these quads moving your leg out in front of you doing exercises like that to build up these these muscles here these quadriceps muscles okay and then just by um having something in front of you pushing up and back down taking less weight through your arms just and then working on the actual squats themselves so sitting down standing up with a chair behind you so really looking at um, how we activate our, our quadriceps muscles is really important. Thank you. So we've got about five minutes left. So I think, Marina, if we, I, I'm sort of in, I'll invite anyone to ask any sort okay. of final questions. We've got five minutes to go. Okay. That's gone in very quick. <laughs> Straight, straight away, Dev's come in with a question. So, um, so he, we've got increasing, increasing getting pain in, in neck and shoulders and mainly on one side. So is there anything that, that they could do to help, help address that? Movement is really important, but moving in up to where you feel that pain. So the shoulder circles, the neck movements from side to side, ear to ear. And when you're doing these neck movements, I would say to you to start off with a little bit of movement, side to side, up and down all round just small circles okay small neck movements and then starting to build that movement into bigger movements all the way down so you're looking over your shoulder so that you're um going round and then then moving into stretches so that you're actually you know hands behind your back squeezing your shoulder blades together as if you've got a pencil in between your shoulder blades you, uh, these are actually on the scottish muscle network website as if you've got a pencil between you're squeezing your shoulder blades together. Hope you can see that. Um, starting off, always start off with movement, just like small movements, gradually building on those movements to get more movement in until you start to feel some 
side to side, up and down, so yes, no. Um, circles, ear to shoulder, but don't bring the shoulder up to the ear, pushing the shoulder down, bringing your head over to your ear, your ear down to your shoulder on both sides. You can do these in lying as well. Um, when you're lying down, pushing your head into your um, bed, coming out, turning your head round. If you feel that your head is too heavy, you can do these lying down as well. Circles and then go into stretches. And again, if you look on the Muscle Network website, I've got neck and shoulder stretches on that. Great. And I think this has to be our last question now. Um, so it's going back to, to legs, actually, and linking back to the sort of sitting to standing. It's someone asking if there's any particular exercises to help them get the most out of their thigh muscles where, they, where they're sort of experiencing particular weakness. So again, it's doing things like your straight, what we just did a, a, a little bit earlier on there, just straightening out our legs. Um, and the longer, you know, if you are straightening your leg out, get the chair out of the way. Okay, so just by straightening your leg out, pulling your toes up, sitting upright and holding that. So it might be at the start, you can't hold it for very long, but you would like to start thinking about holding it for a bit longer. If you can, you would start to think about even using a band, you know, that you're, and, and I can't actually do it, because, but if I've got a band around my leg and it's under a chair leg, pushing out that way to make it a little bit harder. You can do it with a weight. Um, these are little weights that actually go around, that do go around your ankle. Like that, popping it on, and just by then challenging it a little bit more. But if you think back to what I said, if you if you can if you can't do twenty repetitions, don't add a weight. Only add a weight once you can do your twenty. Only increase intensity there. If at first it's enough for you just to activate those those thigh muscles by pushing down, by stretching it out slowly and really as if you've got a weight on, and then letting it bend slowly not letting it collapse down, that's you working pretty hard already. And I think I'll, I'll try and sneak in an absolute final question with yep. two minutes So um, we had a question around um, any exercises for ankle instability and turning in feet, and that's from someone who uses a splint, but then without it, they really struggle to walk. Okay, so it's really important that you do use your splint. So um, if in the house you are able to stand, even just standing, um, and holding on to something without the splint on and then seeing if you can take your hands off, you're going to start to really challenge your ankle muscles just by doing that. Um, so it's, it's as simple as just standing. If you find that you can do that quite well, standing on one foot, standing on that leg, but it would need to be with support and make sure that you've got someone beside you or you, you know, you've got your table to hold on to. It's hard to try and give advice when we can't actually see you, but these are just suggestions that you can perhaps try and what I would always say, don't do anything that makes you feel unsafe. Um, don't do anything that increases your pain. Always tune into your body and think how you feel because look after your body. You know, if you want to have that confidence, you need to make sure that you're not kind of overstretching yourself in many, in many ways. <laughs> I think that's a fantastic note to end on. Um, these, thank you so much both for, for both of these sessions. Um, they've been fantastic and I kind of, I won't put thank it in the spot, but I'm sure I'll be in touch about maybe organising some further ones because we had some, some great interaction and great, and great take up. So thank you everybody who, who submitted questions and, and taken part. A huge thanks to Marina. Um, we'll be in touch after this with um, a, a short feedback form, which is fantastic if you could um, uh, complete for us. I, I said earlier, I think in that email, what we'll try and do is put in some links to the um, resources that Marina talks about, particularly on the Scottish Muscle Network website, because I think there's some really fantastic stuff on there for, for, you, for people to use as well. Um, and do um, check out the other seminars we have available and um, the, the recording of this one and uh, the afternoon's earlier one on seated exercise will be available at some point later this week. So Marina, thank you so much. And thanks everyone thank for you. joining. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.